Hello everybody and welcome to this video. In today's video I want to talk about a few things that I really wanted to buy in the past but then decided not to buy. As a minimalist I really try to pay close attention to what I bring into my life, the things I buy and yeah also the things that I take into my life for free. So I thought it would be interesting for you when I share this list and talk about why I thought I needed these things and why I then decided that I don't need them, that I don't want to get them, that I don't want to pay any money for or invite them into my life. So the first thing that I have really thought so much about and that I was so sure that I wanted it is a small bag. Like I thought about a small leather bag or just like a small bag that I can put my phone, my keys, my wallet and things like that in. And in my mind I saw myself like traveling whenever um, I would be on a train or like just whenever I had a travel day I would have this bag with just the essentials, with just the things that are not allowed to get lost and I would have that like on me so that these things are not in my backpack also when I'm here um, at home and I don't need like to take anything with me that I just had this small bag where I could put these things into and go somewhere and I, I was really sure I wanted to have that bag and then I visited my mom's place in Switzerland and she actually had a small leather bag and I took it with me and it was not perfect for several different reasons. Like it had the wrong color, I didn't like part of the design and things like that and I already knew that but I thought I'd take it with me to try it out. And what I realized is that I would not use this bag and so I decided to not buy it and I think the reason I didn't use it or the reason that it wasn't actually as practical as I thought is just that my life in general is different from what I thought it is or from like there were not that many days where I would use that bag because usually whenever it's not summer I have like my jacket on or something else on that has pockets so I can put all of these things in pockets so I there's no need for a small bag and in summer there are not so many days where I would go somewhere but not take my backpack or where I would go somewhere take my backpack and my backpack is so full that I would like put it somewhere else like in the back of the car if I go by car or um, on like the luggage in the luggage compartment in the train if I would go somewhere by train and then especially last year I would not go anywhere so there really was no need for a bag like that. With that said it could of course happen if my lifestyle changed drastically that I would invest in a bag like that, pick one up, ask my mom again if I could have that bag from her or things like that. Maybe, I mean there is a chance that a bag like that would be very practical because I thought a lot about it. I know people that use bags like that and I really saw myself using a bag like that as well and I thought it would be very practical. But in my current life there is just no need for a bag like that. So I decided to not get a bag like that. The next thing is I wanted to get a new bike. And the first time I really wanted to get that bike I think was about four years ago when I had moved to Germany, when I got that bike that I had back then, but it was just not ideal. I had that dream of like a bike with only one gear which would be very light and practical to drive around the city when I would go to university just to be very like sporty, fast and practical. I was looking into buying secondhand bikes, making a bike of my own like out of secondhand pieces. I also thought about buying a new bike, did some research and it would have cost me a few thousand euros I think to get the bike that I actually wanted and the reason I decided to not get it in the end was just that after time I realized I really like my bike to be comfortable for example and these fast bikes are usually not comfortable at least what I know what I have used so far and the other thing is just that a several thousand euros is too much for a thing that I would use sometimes. Also back then I usually had my son in a seat on the back of my bike so I would have needed to have these two bikes in order to sometimes take my son with me and sometimes go without him. And I just realized that it's not worth it, the money and having a second bike 
for the few occasions where a bike like that would actually make sense, where I would actually use it. And I think that's a classical case of like a dream self that I had in my head. I wanted to be that sportive girl that only used her bike in a city that would never go by public transport if she could avoid it. That would be very, yeah, sportive, that could like go everywhere by bike and had that, that hipster, amazing um, bike. And I just had a bike. It was not like a pretty one. It was not a expensive one. It was not a particularly cool one. So I wanted to have that perfect bike, but then I realized I don't need a bike like that because I'm fine with just having a basic bike that does what I need it to do. Another thing I thought about buying for a long time is a new wooden desk. Now, I don't know if you know that I don't have a desk anymore. Even though I was still studying, I at some point decided that I would declutter my desk. And I will link you the video up here where I talk about why I decided to not have a desk anymore. But that wish for a new desk um, was there before I decluttered the old one and also sometimes after I decluttered it. And the desk I had, like the, my last desk I had, was actually one from, I think, Ikea. And it was just not, it was like, it looked like wood, but it was not wood. So it had this plasticky finish. It was cheap. I also got it secondhand for just a few euros on a local marketplace. So it was just not a good desk in the sense of, I did not particularly like the look and I certainly did not like how it felt. Like I really envisioned that wooden desk and I had a wooden desk before that my boyfriend now uses and it just made sense that we like changed the desks because of the space we needed and the space our desks were in. So I, I gladly gave my wooden desk to my boyfriend, but with the desk I had, I was just not happy. But then I realized that, again, I, I didn't even want to have a desk, so why would I get another desk? And I also looked up how much it would cost, and there were just a few desks like the one I imagined, and I never ended up finding the perfect one. Also, they were pretty expensive, and so I thought, again, like, just because I don't actually really love my desk, is it worth it to spend so much money on new desk that I would like a bit more, but in the end I don't want to invest in such heavy pieces that I really don't know how long I'm gonna use them for. Just at, at the time where I wasn't even sure if I need, wanted a desk in general. And so I thought the money was just not worth trying that out. And if you want to know how my like financial situation is right now, I'll link you the video up here where I talk about how much a month costs in my life, um, what I spent my money for, which part of my life costs how much and how much money I earn with YouTube and in general. I pretty much give you all the information there is on my financial situation at the moment. So if you are interested in that video, go check it out. So yeah, a desk was another thing that I just realized it would be nice. It would be like a more perfect desk that I would imagine myself loving more, but it was just not worth it. And it really made sense for me to wait and realize that that is the case. And that is the case for so many things. And that is one of the things that helps me not impulse shop, not spend too much money, not cluttering my surroundings to just give it some time, not buying it right away when I think about something. And I actually talked about that in one of my recent videos that I will link you up here as well so you can check it out, where I talk about some habits and systems I have in place to uh, make sure that I stay minimalist and happy with my lifestyle. The next thing is actually another like wooden thing that I wanted to have because I thought it would be so much more pretty. And actually that's like a wooden laundry rack. Now we just have like a basic metal laundry rack. We don't have a dryer here in Germany because they are not that common and it's more sustainable and the clothes will last longer if you hang dry them instead of drying them in a dryer. That said, it's totally up to you. I would never like say which is the best method for a person so I choose to hang dry my clothes and we have like a cheap metal like drying rack for all of our clothes and that drying rack is not in its best shape anymore but it's it still works and it was not yeah as I said it was cheap it's not pretty it's just a basic tool we use to dry our clothes but recently or like over the past year or so I have seen this beautiful wooden clothes drying racks um, on the internet at friends houses and I thought like oh this is such a nice piece like that would actually be beautiful that it would actually look 
good. I would actually love to have that. I would actually like cherish that item. But there we really have two things. Again, this like I would I don't want to have an item that I like so much that I cannot imagine myself parting with if it's just a, a random tool I use in everyday life. And on the other hand, I looked up how much these things cost and they are so expensive if you go with like a really sustainable one. And then I found one on Amazon, but if I can, I don't want to support Amazon. So, uh, and also I don't want to buy just any product that is made of wood when I really can't tell if it's made sustainably. And so I decided again, it's not worth spending the money. It's not worth hunting down a laundry rack like that as long as mine is in a perfectly fine condition to be used. Of course, I can imagine if mine breaks down, if there is like a reason to really get a new one, then I would think again about getting one of these beautiful wooden ones just because I think they are so nice. And because I realized over the past year that I want to allow myself to actually have beautiful things. I want to allow myself to feel at home and feel cozy and feel that I really like the things I'm using on an everyday basis, but I do not want to sacrifice um, my minimalist lifestyle for that. I do not want to spend too much money for that. And I want to make sure that I could still part with these things if something in my life changes. So I don't see a reason to invest like tens of thousands of dollars or euros to make my surroundings beautiful, but then I would not want to move anywhere anymore just because I have these things and I would want to take these things where with me wherever I go and I do not want that kind of attachment at the moment. Maybe in the future I'll have a pretty house somewhere and I'll like fill it moderately with things that I think are beautiful but for now I want to be flexible. I don't want to have things that tie me down. Another thing I wanted to get is a new camera bag and that's something that I wanted to get for the past few years but um, I don't know if you know for the past few years I have changed my cameras. First I had like one camera and then I like uh, downgraded it so I just had a lot of lenses and then, then I downgraded to two lenses and then mostly to one lens. So a camera bag that I would wanted like four years ago was an entirely different camera bag from what I would need like two years ago. So that is the first thing that changed. And then in 2020, I got my new camera that I'm filming this YouTube video on and that camera is a lot smaller. So again, the camera bag that I would have bought in 2016, 2018 would not be good for the camera I have now. So I have to say, I'm pretty glad I did never really go through with buying a new camera bag just because I always had one that worked. I always thought that there would be a camera bag that is more perfect for um, what I had, the setup I had. But then I ended up changing my setup and now I'm so glad I never bought a new one because I would have had to buy new ones at least two times since I wanted to have a new bag just because my camera setup changed so much. Even now, like a year ago, I bought my backpack, which I really do love. And it comes with like a camera bag in the, like on the bottom. And that camera bag is a bit too big for my camera. Of course I can use it for other things. And that's what I'm doing now because my camera setup at the moment is really smaller, but who knows, maybe in the future, my camera setup is going to be bigger again. So I just realized that for now, it's not worth investing in a new camera bag because these can cost somewhere between 50 and 200 euros, depending on what you want, what size you need and things like that. And so I decided to not do that and just work with what I have because there's even a difference between one year I think I would want a camera back for just my camera and my lenses and the next year I think I want a camera back for my lenses, my hard drives, my camera and like my other camera equipment and cables. And then it's a, a, an entirely different size that I would need. So I realized that I'm not like, I'm not sure I'm not sure enough of what kind of a camera bag I would need. So it doesn't make sense to invest in one if most likely my idea of the perfect camera bag would change again in the next few months or at least in the next few years. And I have a, I have a camera bag that works right now. So there's no need to get a new one. If I ever will have the feeling that I exactly know which camera bag I'll need for the next two years, then maybe I'll go ahead and buy one. 
Oh, and the next one is actually something for this YouTube channel. And I've talked about that, I think, in videos before, because I said I really needed to buy lighting. I needed to buy lights to film these YouTube videos because I that especially when I had my old camera, that was really a problem. I struggled with filming in winter because usually the light was dark enough that the quality would really suffer. It was too dark. It was complicated, difficult. It was just annoying that I did not have any light. But at the same, same time, I never really wanted to buy lights because as a minimalist, just the thought of having a piece of equipment that is that big is like terrifying. I mean, that sounds a bit strange maybe, but just all of my personal belongings, it was kind of like double the weight and size of my personal belongings if I got camera lighting. And with that said, maybe I'll get lights in the future. Maybe my boyfriend will because he um, works with cameras and photography and filmmaking as well. But for me, I decided for this YouTube channel, especially after getting this new camera, that I really don't need to get lights, that I will continue shooting with available light, with just the sunlight that comes through my window and that that works for now because um, with my new camera, I'm able to film during winter. I'm able to film when it's pretty dark and it still doesn't look really bad. So I'm pretty happy that I ended up not buying camera lighting. It's also something that uses a lot of power. It's something where you have to get new light bulbs every now and then. I don't think there are any sustainable options besides buying them secondhand. They can be pretty expensive. So even though I thought that I really had to get these, I'm so glad I didn't. I'm so glad I waited because now I saw that I actually don't need them at the moment. And I'm so much happier like that because I also really don't like like setting up a whole studio before I'm able to film because I really love just putting my camera here, starting to record and film a video for you. So I'm pretty happy I did not buy these lighting things and I'm confident that I won't need them in the near future, but I can keep you updated if I decide to go ahead and buy some lighting for filmmaking. Another thing, it's actually also in the equipment category, is a power bank. For like the, for the past few years, I think for the past three or four years, I've always been thinking about buying a power bank. I always thought like so many people have them. It's so practical if you run out of like battery on your phone, on your camera, because my new camera can be charged and can actually also film with just the power bank attached if it's completely out of power. And that's amazing. And also I thought about like when I'm traveling, just having that extra power would be so nice. That's like similar to my situation with my um, small leather bag or what I wanted to have. I'm not traveling that many days of the year and especially I'm not traveling that many days of the year where I would not have access to power outlets. Like I definitely do that. I go camping, I go on road trips where maybe I would not have power for several days, but then for now, it has just always worked out with planning a bit better and not using my phone when I'm there because usually I just don't need my phone or charging while driving or things like that. And so it has always worked out. And for me, that is a huge rule that I give myself for things like that. Things I want for a specific situation, I really try to wait until I am in the situation, until I see like, yes, for the trip I'm going on next month, I will need that. Like I thought about all the things that go into planning that, that go into circumstances that I'm in there and I realized that I need that piece of equipment, that I need that tool in order to have a successful trip, in order to do the things that I want to do. Now that can backfire as well, because a year ago we planned to go to Mongolia by train, which did not end up happening because of our global situation. And I bought my shoes and my backpack thinking that I buy them for that trip, partially. I still needed a new backpack and new shoes and I use them all the time now, but I still bought them because I thought like, yes, going on that trip, I definitely need a new pair. Like it definitely, I cannot work with the one that I have now. And thinking about that now, I could have worked it out with the ones I had since I did not go on that trip. Like I only really needed to buy them at that 
point in time because I thought I would go on that trip. And that is really true for so many other things like a power bank, for example. In my everyday life, I just pay attention to how charged my phone is and my camera is so I don't run out of battery and I can charge it whenever I want because I'm always near a power outlet. But if in the future I will go on a trip where I see, where I know that I will be like off the grid for several days and I know I will shoot photos and videos and I need to charge my phone for whatever reason, then I will go ahead, buy a power bank or like borrow one from a friend, use the one my boyfriend has, for example. And if I, yeah, but if I come into a situation where I know it will be necessary, then I will buy it. But I won't buy it now, just thinking that in the next few years there will be a situation where I really need it and now it would be somewhat handy sometimes because I think that's not enough for me at least to justify buying something. But with these things said, you can see that it is a highly personal choice all the time if it comes to wanting to buy something or not. And for me it has really worked out so well just waiting a bit and thinking about it and reflecting and seeing if it's a thing that I actually need, that I know that I will get a lot of use out of, or if it's a thing that I just in my head have a situation where I would like to use it. But also with that said, for my um, wardrobe, for example, I am a lot less strict when it comes to buying new things. I buy new things on a regular basis just because I like to perfect my wardrobe and clothes is, are something that I use every single day. So I think it's good if I have clothes that work well, that I like, that I think I'm beautiful in, so I allow myself to buy new clothes, but also because most of the time I buy them secondhand and they are not that expensive like that. And so I think it really has to be a personal choice what categories and items you want to buy, you want to spend money on, and also it has you have to find a solution to how long you want to wait if you think you want something. If you allow yourself in certain categories to impulse buy because you realize it works out well, or if you always want to put in like a 24 hour, one week, one month period of um, waiting, from the moment you wanted to have that thing until you can buy it to make sure that it's actually something you need. I don't have a strict time frame for myself, but I just try to, whenever I want something, I really try to think about why I want it. I do want, definitely want to allow myself to buy new things if they add value to my life. I bought this new camera, even though it was very expensive, but it is, makes it, my YouTube channel like work so much easier. It, it's lighter, it's all I wanted to have in a camera. I also bought my new backpack without really needing a new backpack, but it is so perfect. I like it so much and it can do so much for me in my everyday life and while I'm traveling. And so I think it's worth spending money. It's worth buying new things if they really um, can bring you value and make your life easier. But in order to figure that out, I think we have to allow ourselves a bit of time because it happens so many times that we just think we need something because we want it in the moment. We want to have that good feeling of buying something, treating ourselves, getting something new because our life is too boring or I don't know what the problem is, but just we tend to want to buy new things all the time and real, don't realize that after having them for a week, for a month, for a year, that exciting feeling is gone. And I only want to buy new things when I know that they are not only gonna make me feel good for a day, but actually for a year or longer. I only want to have new things if they can really change my life for a longer period of time. That said, I don't think that things can really change your life, but they can definitely make things easier, processes easier, they can, um, yeah, help you achieve certain things. And I only want things that can do that in the long run and not things that only make me happy for a day because, because they are new. So with that said, I hope you like this video and also let me know what you do to make sure that the things you buy new actually add value to your life, what you do to make sure to not just overspend, buy new things and accumulate new things that you don't actually need in the long run. Thank you so, so much for watching. And if you want to see more videos, I'll link you a video and a playlist right here that you can check out if you want to. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.